And our good friend, Dr. Joe Congeni, Sports Medicine Center, Eckman Children's Hospital, with us in studio. Joe, NFL football was almost like 33 years to the date or something like that. We had the Joe Theismann injury years ago. This past weekend, Alex Smith of the Washington Redskins, unfortunately, a real gruesome, two broken bone injury. Mm -hmm. Uh, Talk about those injuries and the ability for those to heal. Yeah, they, they, you know, people call them, the, you know, we call them kind of the gruesome injury. And mm-hmm. again, I tell you before, they look really bad, but as long as you get on them in the first 24 hours, they usually have pretty decent outcomes. Remember just a year ago at the queue, not long, you know, longer than a year ago, Gordon Hayward, we talked about Kevin Ware from Louisville, and you see those. I asked you earlier, I blew my question on the air, I was going to ask you, are you the type that can watch those? I don't. I yeah, don't like a lot it. of people tell me they can't. But this week, everybody's kind of asking is, what is the the big deal about the gruesome injuries and uh, his was more of a spiral fracture from a twisting of the lower leg and I wonder how with those bigger stronger athletes this doesn't happen more frequently with the twisting spiral fracture both bones tibia and fibula it was a a, a compound fracture which means it's through the skin uh it um There were some really weird coincidences. You mentioned them a little bit. Is November 18th, it was the exact same day as the Joe Theismann 33 years ago. The score was the same, 23-21. It was the same team, the Redskins, and it was the same injury as both bones in the right lower leg were broken. Those were just some of the coincidences they talked about. Oh, and by the way, one more coincidence. Romeo Cornell was on the sidelines of both uh, both games. Wow. Watching it from the sidelines. <laughs> but the big deal is there's three major risks to those, and that's why you see the person on the cart. You, they put the splint on. They literally take them off in the cart and go straight to the hospital to operate on those. Number one is infection. You can't let those open and get get infected. So there's a lot of cleanup in the area that when they get to the hospital, there's a thing called debridement where they trim away anything that could go on to infection. They get real deep, clear the soft tissue, clear the bone, make sure there's no infection. That's a big, big key. Number two is a thing called exertional, or I'm sorry, is a thing called acute compartment syndrome. And so what happens, they bleed so much and they swell so much that a lot of times it can cut off the nerve supply or the blood supply below the fracture to the foot. And people can lose the foot from the standpoint of an acute compartment. It's a real big deal. And the sooner you get on surgery, get the swelling under control, no chance of acute compartment and you're not going to lose the foot. So that's great news. And the third thing is is people don't realize that when you break the bone, you also tear the ligament, injure the soft tissue, so the muscles and ligaments get torn. And actually, that's what ends up taking so long to get back. So we're looking at about six to nine months after an injury like that. He is a, he's, he's 34. He'll be 35. Um, this day and age, such good rehab, such good surgical technique, good chance he'll come back. But 35, we're looking at late summer to be back next year. That's a little bit hard for a 35 year old quarterback and to put everything in his basket so for the Redskins it makes it tough you know old friend Colt McCoy is in the bullpen ready to he's the guy that'll come in this week they're in the lead in their division and all this kind of stuff important stuff but anyway gruesome injury got to avoid those infections if there's something with a lot of swelling can't take a chance on acute compartment so a couple times every football season in high school we send somebody immediately to the emergency room because you just can't take a risk on losing the rest of that Joe, limb. and correct me if i'm wrong here in these type of injuries too you're talking blood loss too so the the promptness the quickness the speed of getting these people into the healthcare is an optimum. Yeah, no it? doubt. The trauma surgeons are waiting for them. They hit the door. They clean it really good. And then everybody's happy once it's cleaned. Once they get the swelling down, blood loss. So very easy with IV access to get that back. IV antibiotics started within the first two or three hours to avoid the in- infection. IV blood. Uh, give give them blood if needed if they've lost so much blood. So all of that stuff that makes it one of the sideline emergencies. Do they have to put rods? In- in the legs and knees? That's what they usually have. They use as a rod to fix them. What do you think of Gordon Hayward this year? I mean, maybe not quite the same guy that he was. That's what they're saying. They're saying, especially on the defensive end, he doesn't have the slide and the quickness. The explosiveness. You know, in basketball, totally an explosive sport. I mean, people used to say, what about football? Definitely now. I mean, just you watch the games. Watch tomorrow how explosive these athletes are. And uh, that's the part that's hard to get back.
All right, Joe. Good stuff. Have a great Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving, Ray. Great. Thanks a lot for having me. Oh, you got it. We'll see you next week. Dr. Okay. Joe Congeni, Sports Medicine Center, Akron Children's Hospital.